Hi, in this short video, I'm going to show you how to use um, Anaconda with uh, Python on a compute server with a GPU. And what we'll do is install PyTorch and TensorFlow and then uh, do a little test with each of them. Okay, so I'm logged into CoCalc. Click the button to load my projects. And I have a project I already made called Demo, so I'll open that. And here I'm going to make a compute server with a GPU. So I'll click Create Compute Server, and then um, let's find a template for a compute server with a GPU. Uh, here's one that costs $3.60 an hour. It runs on the HyperStack cloud, and we'll have an, 80, uh, an A100 GPU with 80 gigabytes of GPU memory. So that should be more than sufficient. So let's use this template and make sure everything is to our liking. Looks good. Okay, and now let's just start it up. Okay, this is going to take about three to five minutes to fully provision our machine with an A100. Um, in the meantime, we can kind of look around and notice that you get some stats about the A100 GPU. If you wanna learn more about it, you can click on data sheet and this tells you all about the amazing A100 GPU. Um, it's on the NVIDIA site. Also in settings right here, this is the general configuration. And if you click on any of these links, it takes you to the appropriate page inside of HyperStack's um, site, which tells you about each of the GPUs. So this is a little page about the NVIDIA A100 GPU and how amazing it is for AI stuff. Um, the image we're using, which is the default here, is Python Anaconda. So this is a, um, basically it gives you a nice, already perfectly uh, configured and ready to go Anaconda environment that will um, be easily usable on your compute server. It's based on Miniforge and it has the ContaForge um, package repo by default. So that's what you see here with condaforge.org. So that will be all set up and ready to go. And we will just be able to type conda install and install any package. You don't need to use sudo or anything like that. All the permissions are set up and ready to go for you. Um, one thing is it's a fairly small distribution of Anaconda. I don't pre-install a lot of packages into this image uh, since that helps keep things like wait and help things helps things to start up quickly. So notice right here, it's now starting up. Um, what happens behind the scene is, is it provisions a HyperStack server, and then it also um, attaches a volume to that server on HyperStack for your data. So um, once you make one of these HyperStack VMs, you can always click stop, and then instead of it costing $3.60 an hour, it will cost, in this case, a fraction of a penny per hour. 0 0.006 dollars per hour because it'll just be storing your configuration data and not everything. So let's just wait for this thing to finish starting up. And it can take a little while, like I mentioned. Um, okay, now it's at 20%. And um, what this does is it starts the default HyperStack image. It then installs Docker, uh, Node.js, and then it pulls some Docker images, and then those provide the connection to CoCalc. Um, the way it works is that the VM with this really nice GPU and uh, lots of ephemeral storage that um, runs on HyperStack and then it connects to CoCalc.com via a couple of WebSocket connections. And then it uses CoCalc's API to provide a Jupyter Notebook, a terminal, and some other functionality. Um, also, the underlying file system that the compute server has uses ZFS, and it uses 100 gigabytes of this ephemeral fast disk as a cache so that the file system feels very, very fast. Okay, so now we're at 50%. Still probably have to wait about a minute for everything to be completely started up. In the meantime, we can prepare. So I can make a terminal, which is going to run on our um, Anaconda 
GPU thing. So you can just say dot term or you can click Linux term and it will create the terminal. And then we could say we'd like it to run on the compute server rather than in these. Um, so CoCalc itself gives you like a little Docker container in which you can run code, but it's very limited. Like if you try to type sudo, it just gives you an error. If you ask about the GPU, there's no GPU. There's nothing about GPUs. So let's click here to select our compute server. And now what we're asking is for the terminal to run on the compute server. Um, it won't work until everything has been fully installed and configured into the compute server. And again, that takes about five minutes the first time. If you stop and restart the compute server uh, additional times, it's significantly faster because everything's been pre-installed. Like Z ZFS, Docker, Node, that's all already installed. So it's a lot faster each additional time. But let's just wait for this to finish. Not done yet. Um, also in preparation, we can make a Jupyter Notebook, which will run on the compute server. So I'll just call it Anaconda GPU Jupyter Notebook. And again, you could run it directly on CoCalc, which gives you lots and lots of kernels, but instead I want to run it on the compute server. Oh, and that's great. It looks like the compute server is now fully started up. Let's go over to the terminal. The terminal is now running on the compute server. And now let's see how this is much more powerful than a default CoCalc project. If I type NVIDIA-SMI, one word, then this tells me about any GPUs that are available. And boom, look, here's our NVIDIA A100 80 gigabyte GPU. And uh, nothing is using it yet. And then if you look over here, there's a little thing which says $3.60 an hour. So that's the charge per hour to use this A100. And this is not like a spot instance or anything like that. This, um, this thing is going to stay running as long as you want it to run. Nothing, nobody will interrupt it or anything like that. Uh, and also we have our Jupyter Notebook. And so we can click here to choose a kernel. We get the Python kernel and um, things will start running once we you know, launch something. So let's try like, um, I don't know, import math. So that'll start up the notebook. And then we could do math.sign of two and compute the sine of two, kind of boring. Um, but there's very little that's pre-installed. For example, if we do import torch, it's just going to say, hey, there's no module torch. And so we're going to install that. You can either install it. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can install this. Um, one, you can do it in the notebook by putting an explanation at the beginning of the explanation point at the beginning of the line and then typing the command to do the install. That will run the command um, in the shell. Alternatively, you can go over to a terminal and then type your command there to do the installation. Moreover, there's two different ways that we can install PyTorch. We can um, install it from Anaconda, from ConduForge. So remember I mentioned ConduForge.org? PyTorch is one of the packages that is available there. And they do you know, a fantastic job maintaining it and um, installation work very well and everything is consistent with any other packages that you want to install from ConduForge. Um, you can alternatively install it using pip and that will also work, but it's possibly a little less likely to work in concert with other packages. If you do pip install, maybe PyTorch and pip install TensorFlow, maybe it's not going to work together. Um, whereas it's definitely gonna work fine if you install from Conda. Um, so let's go ahead and install PyTorch from Conda. Conda install PyTorch. And it's going to grab the appropriate files, download them, etc. We have to uh, confirm the download once it gets the information about exactly what needs to be installed. Um, one other thing to watch out for is disk space usage. And I'm gonna just split the terminal. And down here, I'm going to check on what the disk space usage is like. So let's see. Um, so it looks like we have, I'm in the way, we have 47 gigabytes of disk uh, available. So there's really no issue at all with disk space. So nothing to worry about there. Um, okay, so it says proceed. Yep, let's go for it. Install PyTorch. And this should take about a minute. Um, these hyperstack VMs are extremely fast. They have great networks bandwidth. They're all running in Canada. 
uh, at least the one that I just ran is running in Canada. Um, also, all network egress on HyperStack is free. So you can uh, pull any data that you compute as part of some computation on HyperStack. There's no charge at all to pull the data out to um, the external network. Okay, so there it goes. You could type top down here if you just want to kind of see that Conda is running. And um, you know, notice that the machine has a huge amount of RAM in addition to the GPU and uh, lots and lots of CPUs. So it's, it's a really good machine. And one of my fun little kind of silly micro mesh sparks is from time import time, t equals time, sum range 10 to the eighth. Because Python is not, uh, it doesn't compile summing up the numbers up to 10 to the eighth and use this uh, clever formula. It just kind of does it by a brute force sum. So you can see how long this takes. And it looks like 1.29 seconds on this processor. Okay, so uh, looking up here, we see that PyTorch is now installed. And so now if we go back here, we should be able to import it. And there it is. So now let's check to make sure that we have CUDA support. So Torch CUDA is available. Excellent. So it's correctly detecting and using our GPU, and it's there. And now, of course, we want to do something with it. And um, let's just use generative AI. So I'll say enter code or use generative AI. And I'm going to request that it, um, let's do something. So let's choose a model, maybe Claude 3 Opus for fun. And then say, uh, please show, or please give me an example of using PyTorch to do an impressive calculation that uses the GPU. For example, multiplying uh, some huge matrices. Um, I want something that is way faster on the GPU than it would be on the CPU. Uh, don't, uh, don't, let's see. Um, be sure to create the large random matrix directly on the GPU. I don't want to like waste time with it copying back and forth between the GPU and the CPU. Okay, so let's just click the button. So it's now going to ask Claude 3 Opus, and now Claude is generating code, and it's written code that will use PyTorch. It's directly creating a 10,000 by 10,000 matrix on the device. And then it's going to multiply them and show us the time. Then it's going to take that matrix and move it from the GPU to the CPU and multiply it again and then show us the time. So I have no idea what it'll do. Uh, oops, looks like time isn't imported, but that's easy to fix by just saying import time. Alternatively, you can always click help me fix in CoCalc, and then you can ask a model to help you fix. And since I think that's probably an easy one to fix, Let's ask it to do it for free using a cheaper model. And over here, it says that time needs to be imported. Okay, that's right. So let's go back up here, import time, and now let's give it a shot. Okay, look at that. So it did the matrix multiplication, and on the GPU, it was 17 times faster than on the CPU. Um, it's kind of fun to watch and see if this, the GPU is actually being used because you can go over in the terminal and for example, type NVIDIA SMI and you'll be able to see that memory is used on the GPU and that there's an actual process using it. But to do that, we're going to need to make our matrix big enough so that it actually takes some noticeable amount of time to do the multiplication. So I'll try um, making it a, I don't know, 25,000 by 25,000 matrix and let's see what happens. Yep, notice a lot of memory got used, um, and it's doing it. It's probably now doing it on CPU. If we look at top, yep, it's now doing it on CPU. It's going to take 17 times as long. Who knows how long that will take? Um, but the uh, GPU matrix multiplication was apparently very fast because the timing says zero seconds. I don't know how to interpret that, um, except that something's funny with timing. Okay, so. Uh, it was infinitely faster on the GPU. Woohoo! Um, hmm. How about this? 
let's uh, switch back to 10,000. But for the GPU benchmark, we will do it 100, 100 times because it was a tenth of a second. So that should take like five to 10 seconds. Okay, so let it run. And again, it seems insanely incomprehensibly fast. So I'm not sure even what to make of that. Um, hmm. um, okay, maybe we can throw in creating the matrix as part of the timing, just to, so we're doing something that takes some time. Nope. All right, GPUs are very, very fast is the conclusion that I will, that we have to take away from this. Okay, so that's uh, an illustration of how to use Anaconda in CoCalc with a GPU. And when you're done, um, you can just, you can either click on servers, it gives an overview of all of your compute servers, and then click the stop button, or you can always click on the little bar across the top for your server and then click stop. And what that will do is it will turn it off. It doesn't delete your data and except for many, maybe some ephemeral data. And then it just sits there and you can start it up later. If you're really, really completely done with it, you're not going to touch the data anymore. You, um, you can click deprovision and that just completely gets rid of everything uh, on the compute server. And instead of costing a fraction of the cent, deprovision, it's always free after you do that but I'll just click the stop button and now it's shutting it down and um, there it goes. Usually stops very quickly since it's a pretty easy thing to do. Okay, it's now off. I notice the cost per hour is 0 0.006, uh, but that does add up over the month. So it's $4.59 a month. So uh, since I'm really done with this, uh, if I need to do some more calculations with this, I'll just start it again and reinstall PyTorch. So I'll just click on deprovision, and now it's completely done. Boom. Okay. Um, so that concludes our demo of using a GPU with Anaconda on CoCalc. Thank you.